Quevalo un tiburón. From Cafeteria Film Studios in Miami, Florida, Fresh or Fresh presents Que Bola, where we talk to various movers and hustlers in South Florida who are popping off and succeeding, and in the process, how they influence in the 305 culture. My name is Darwin Figueroa, and I am your host. I hope you enjoy this, and let's get into it, all right? Listo. In this week's episode, we sat down with Marjorie Gomez of the Entourage cover band also of Ruxley.com and we discussed her career in music, how she got started in music, how she got into the cover band industry, um, how she became a female band leader in South Florida. We also got into other things like um, Latin sexuality in music and in basically everything in Miami, how reggaeton is like spoken porn, <laughs> a bunch of other cool shit. So I hope you guys like this talk and let's get into it, all right? But you're just like a fan? You go and like watch them? Yeah, them I go. Or I mean, the thing is that on the road, there's a there's a camaraderie. There's like, on the road, being a UM fan is different from being a, a fan here in Miami because on the road, there's not, it's not like everybody is from Miami, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, if you're on the road and you're a UM fan, it's not that many of you, you know? Right. There might be like 80 or 100 real diehard fans that you see all the time. And through the years... Um, then I've, you become friends with them too. Yeah, you become friends with them. Like, <laughs> And then you meet like all these other UN fans from all over the country that are not from Miami. So you like you have yeah, UN fans from like West Virginia, UN fans from, from North Dakota, UN fans from like Michigan, from everywhere, and they're not from so, Miami. Yeah. And then... And then you only get to see them on the road because they're not from that's Miami, true, you know what I'm saying? True. It's so like it's, visiting uh, family from outside. Yeah, it's like visiting family, exactly. So that's why I like traveling on the road. Even though I didn't go to UM, I went to FIU, but growing up, FIU didn't have a football team or anything like that. It was just like known as a commuter school. So that's why I, like, I really traveled and I went into um to UM as my school that I spent the majority of my time. Plus, but anyways, it's, it's home, it's home. It's home. I All went right. to UM, but I never went to a football game. Oh, you went to UM? For real? What year did you graduate? Did you graduate? Yeah. What year did you graduate? 11. 2011? Yeah. What did you study at UM? Music. Oh, for real? So we're in the studio with Marjorie, <laughs> uh, the new episode of Que Bola. This episode of Que Bola. Introduce yourself to the people. Say what's up. Sure, what's up? Um, yeah, Marjorie. Um, what's your last name? Marjorie Gomez. Marjorie Gomez. Yes. Um, what's your IG handle? Uh, is March Tobin. March Tobin. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Let's spell that one out. March Tobin? Yes, it's M A R J T O V E N. March Tobin. Yeah, like, like Beethoven, that. but March Tobin. So That's you... actually my friend that nicknamed me that. So I was like, you know what? I like it. I'm going to use it. So you kept that one. Yeah. Everybody, every musician out there has like a, their name and then like their instrument and then like their last name. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, Zach, uh, Guitar, I don't know, Smith, you know? Yeah. So I was like, I don't know. I feel like that's too, uh, everybody's too doing that, you know? Yeah. I need, I need like my own. Your own little and version. And my friend, I feel like I like my friend, and he did that like out of love, so I like that nickname. That's cool. So how'd you <laughs> end up at UM? You were born and raised here in Miami? No, so I was born in the Dominican Republic. Oh, okay, shout to DR. Yeah, so I came here when I was like 12. I did middle school here, I did high school here, and then I went to uh, New World, the School of the Arts. Oh, for real? Yeah. You, as a university? Uh, yeah. So they have a partnership with UF and Miami Dade. So okay. when you get into the university, you take your every class that's non music related at Miami Dade, mm -hmm. or eventually after like I think thirty credits, you can go to UF and mm -hmm. then do it do it there. Uh, but yeah, so here you do your basics with Miami Dade, and then the all the music stuff at UM. I mean at uh, New World. Oh, we have we have some people who who uh, who graduated from New World. Um, they have a show called um, Grown on Complex. Oh. Um, Edson Jean and Josh Jean Baptiste and Maria Corina Ramirez, they did the, the thespian, the theater oh, program. Nice. Yeah, they, ha they have pretty cool. It's a small school, you know, so it's very yeah. like uh, focused. They were telling me about that, how it's a really small school and very there's not small. that many people that get in. And everybody very basically small. knows each other type of situation. Yeah, I wasn't there for long because then I also had audition for UM and I got accepted. So I was like, you know what? I think maybe I should transfer and just go there okay plus i had some friends that were going there as well um so yeah that's kind of how i got so there. you've always been from south florida yeah i always lived down here well yeah. i lived in the dominican republic yeah. before the dominic well i was born in the, the dominican republic but yeah. i moved with my family to chile for like three years is your family Ch from chile no nah, everybody's dominican af okay 
<laughs> All right, so they were just in Chile. They were just chilling, some, chilling. Some shit. <laughs> yeah, on a f- freaking uh, iceberg. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> they were no. on some next level shit. Yeah, no, my dad got some work there, and you know we moved there because we were a family. How old were you when that shit happened? That was in '95, so I was like seven. So it was like from seven to like ten years old. Damn. That's that's a nice little like detour. A lot of people don't really have a chance. Very to much. And like I'm an island girl, a kid, and then going to another country in South America, which is it's very shocking. It's very different yeah. when you're like that young, even for an adult. But yeah. And then at ten, that's when you moved down to Miami. Uh, I went back a little bit to DR, and then I came to Miami. Okay. And ever since that, you were here. What high school did you go to? Uh, I went to Varela. Okay. Down in Kendall. So that's like, like a North Kendall. school. Uh, is it? Yeah, when I was I going to high school. I don't know if it's honor. No, I, when I was uh, going to high school, that school didn't exist. To me, I consider it a new school, but I'm oh, old yeah, as fuck. Yeah, oh, yeah, I thought you said honor school. I was like, no, well, not honor I don't school. know what the honor part about it is. <laughs> <laughs> we honor the ratchet yeah, us over real. here at Varela. Oh, my. <laughs> Could you imagine a school where it's just honoring all the, all the ratchetness that, <laughs> that Latinos do? Honors program, but it's Coroquetas. For real, for real. <laughs> that would oh be my dope. god, that would be amazing. <laughs> so then you followed your your passion into music at UM. When you went to UM for music, what was it about it that that you know you decided, okay, I'm gonna go for this particular field? So I grew up always playing uh, classical piano, um, and that's very specific. You know, that's not jazz or that's not popular music. You know, like mm-hmm. you're not typically people don't become like rock stars after they play classical music. For, yeah. But that's what I knew, and you know, I, I figure, you know, that's what I know. I'm just gonna like try to be the best that I can at it. And UM has awesome teachers for that so I took that path of um, I did actually music business and classical piano Mm -hmm. and yeah and I learned a little bit of music business about you know how to sort of be an entrepreneur uh, as a musician since they're always or we are always sort of starving Mm -hmm. and then I did classical piano but not to say that I do much with my classical piano degree besides know really well piano i guess you know yeah i gain i would say more of like the street and more of like the popular music style of playing by joining bands and just playing with bands so after college so okay so that's that's basically what i wanted to talk to you about yeah i know that you do bands you play in a lot of bands in south florida you uh you basically run your own band now how what was that experience like getting into that becoming first of all like a band mate and then a band leader you know, how, how did you traverse those, those, that journey? Like, yeah, it was, uh, actually it was kind of interesting. I always wanted to perform. So I was in different bands playing like pop punk. I even have a, uh, an album with my old, old band. What's it called? The band was brand name punk. The, the what? The band is was brand name punk. Brand name punk yeah. was the entire name. Yes. That okay. was the name of the band. Okay. Uh, it was with two friends of mine that I, I met uh, uh, while I worked at Best Buy, if I could disclose that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. What the fuck? Shout to Best Buy. <laughs> Shout, for real, great discounts when I worked there. Uh, yeah, so we were in a punk band. I played drums, actually, for them. Yeah. And it was great, but I felt, because they weren't mus- they were musicians, but they weren't like classical trained or anything like that. They just learned by themselves. Mm. Um, and the music to me was like not necessarily where I wanted to be. I knew that I, I actually love pop music. Uh, surprisingly, I study classical, but attraction for pop music. And I wanted to play that, you know, I either wanted to play that for an artist, like mm-hmm. I wanted to be their piano player, or I wanted to be in a band that played pop music, mm-hmm. either original stuff or even like covers, you know? Yeah. When I play with my, with my band brand name Punk, mm-hmm. anytime we would play a cover, people would go crazy. Yeah. So I knew that that was like an easy way to get reaction from people that would... Yeah. At the same time, make me feel great because when you're performing, you want to feel good too. You yeah, know? you want to get the you want to get that pump from the audience. Yeah, you know, that's that, exactly. That's knowing that they're going. into it. Exactly. So then you you started off with Brandon Punk as a as a drummer, and after that, did you slowly progress into going into other bands, or did you yeah. decide on creating your own band? Yeah. So then I had another friend that also worked at Best Buy. Again, shout out to Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Best Buy making For real. musical connections. Yeah, so he worked uh, with me, and he had a cover band, and they play, like, rock, like, 80s rock. Like, okay. he took me, I don't know, if, have you ever been to Little Hoolies? Yeah. Down south? Down south by yeah. Uh, Pinecrest. Yeah. He's like, oh, you gotta come, I'm playing with my band, whatever, and I was like, okay, cool. I go, I don't know if you've ever been in there, but it's yeah, been straight there. up, like, time machine back to the 80s rock. Like, yeah. Which is cool, because... Sm- uh, cigarette smoke everywhere. Oh, everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. And, like, yeah, you got dudes just playing, like... 
Led Zeppelin, like really like classic rock and mm -hmm. 80s rock. And I did that with them for a little bit. He's like, I actually need a piano player. I don't need a, key, um, a drummer. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll do it. I did it for a little bit. And then it was kind of tough because only him and I were like, Good. Uh, not just good, but like just the same age. Everybody else was like at least like 40 years older. Than oh, us. okay. <laughs> so it was harder for you to the guys to so like communicate. It, it was hard. And also I can't, it's hard to give somebody that old feedback and then taking it a certain way. Like I would tell them something about a pop song that we were playing because yeah. we were trying to migrate from all the 80s rock. And then they would be like, no, but I want to play like this. Yeah. And then it was just like, all right, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're already set in their ways. Yeah. So we decided to like move from those members and get you know new members and i actually have a bunch of you know high school friends that um were musicians and they're awesome so we kind of did that we drained the swamp as some would say <laughs> <laughs> and what's the name of the new band uh well now we went through a lot of transitions but the the full ensemble now is entourage entourage and yeah. how many of you guys are there we're seven, but Damn, that's a big ass band. Sometimes we could be eleven, sometimes Yo. we could be ten, depending on on the show that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And but you guys primarily seven. play covers. We only play covers. Yeah, we only play covers. We're a cover band, a top forties band is what. what top forties cover band. Yeah. So when you decide on what you're gonna play, it has to be top forties. Like, is there anything that like slips down? Like, what is it like? Um, so it mainly has to be top forties, but because we have the musicians that we have in our band that are like very young and they're just you know they wanna uh, explore, explore. Yeah, they end up playing things sometimes where you're just like, wait. What song is that? Is that, you know, it sounds cool, but is that the song? No. Okay. Oh, yes, it is. Never mind. So I would say that's as far as we go. But there's, there's no original, no. It's all top 40s. Yeah, it's yeah. all top 40s. Yeah. I mean, that's, unfortunately, a lot of times that's what, what makes, you know, the money. Yeah. It, so. No, I understand. And when you decide on doing a gig, what is it that you're looking for as, like, the thing that you say, okay, this is what I want to do instead of, like, I'm sure you've been offered some weird-ass gigs and shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oof. Well, right now we're lucky because we're under Tropics Entertainment, which is their entertainment company that basically um, has all these bands and they place them in different venues. And, oh, yeah? And weddings, yeah, and stuff like that. So they, they kind of take care of a lot of that for us. Uh, but before, um, well, actually, I'll tell you, in weddings, uh, the bride and the groom, they get to request songs. All the time. Yeah, and sometimes they'll request the most craziest shit that you're just like, what is this? I don't yeah. even know what this is. Like, why are we playing this? Like, even songs in, like, another language, like German. <laughs> Somebody requested for yeah. you to play a German and you're song? Like, dude, like, you're in Miami, you're getting married in Miami, you're hiring a Miami band. Yeah. We're not gonna fucking We're not gonna German. play German for yeah, you. Yeah, come on, dude. <laughs> that kind of shit. That's crazy. So you primarily do weddings? We do, so when wedding season comes, we do a lot of weddings. Wedding okay. season is usually like from like September all the way into like May. Um, but we're, we play year round, um, just mainly clubs. So we play like every Monday and Friday at Ocean Sand and South Where's Beach. Where's that? South Beach. Where? It's like literally right next to the Clevelander, like okay. on Ocean Drive and 10th. Literally. So on what days? Mondays and Fridays. Most Mondays, Mondays and Fridays. Mondays and Fridays. Yeah. yeah, those are some different, some weird ass days. Uh, like, yeah. what's good with the Mondays? Uh, I mean, you know that area is like touristy. Yeah. Is that, so there's like a lot, a lot of tourists. Yeah, there's that every day's popping on South Beach. Every day. It's just yeah. like what kind of crowd you get on a Monday in comparison to a Friday. You know what? It's like about the same. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, at least in that area, because it's just like tourists don't yeah, give a fuck. Yeah, 24-7. Like they're, they're there. Yeah, it's Monday. To them, it's Friday, there, because yeah. they just got there to spend money. It's more about seasons there. It's like what kind of crowd that you get on in winter or summer or, you What's know. the best kind of crowd, then? Um, I would say the winter crowd. You Why get a lot that? of, like, young, like, European kids that are just, like, ready to party. And okay. they literally, like, come and, like... They're like partying hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they come already fucked up. I don't even know. Yeah. Where they go before. <laughs> yeah. They just show up and they're fucking wrecked. Yeah. Ready to have fun. The, yeah. We got some videos of that place getting pretty crazy. And in the, in the entourage, what is it? What's your position right now in the band? Uh, well, I'm the band leader. I actually started the band. Okay. Um, with that guy that I told you, but yeah. the, he's long out of the picture. Okay. He got um, drained as well. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For real. Drake is swamp. For real. For real. <laughs> I like how you're readjusting your hat like motherfucking Trump and shit. <laughs> We're going to drain the swamp. Uh, 
So, so you're the band leader. What other position? What, what, I what play are, piano. Are you singing? So you're singing and you're playing I, piano. I do backup singing. Yeah. Okay. So you do backup singing yeah. and you play piano. And I play piano. Yeah. And I direct them. Uh, directing involves, you know, making the set list before the show. Mm -hmm. um, and then while at the show, also like, you know, calling out cer certain songs, like changing it up or like reading the crowd, make sure that, you know, the party's going. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. How do you feel that as being a woman that your your authority is uh, placed in music? Because, I mean, I have a lot of musicians that come through here and talk to me. But, like, I always like knowing a different perspective. You know, women have it. Everything is different from a woman's perspective. You know, I'm never going to be able to understand that I'm a dude. So that's why I like yeah, yeah. peering no, into that. No, and I welcome those conversations. I appreciate, actually, you asking that. Um, it's actually really tough. Like... And not just for me. My band is actually kind of unique because our drummer is also a female. Okay. And one of the singers is also a female. So it's, it's, uh, you know, kind of like a half and half, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ratio sort of. Like Still a Still more men than women. Yeah. <laughs> like a dynamic. Uh, but yeah, but more, you know, you don't typically see a girl playing drums or a girl directing the band. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you see a lot of girl singers in the front usually. Yeah. Um, so... On my end, I definitely dealt with a lot of uh, skepticism from people that I hire on the spot because, uh, you know, my drummer for the weekend can make it or whatever. Um, like you mean from other musicians? Yeah, like like musicians are, you know, for a lot of them, especially in the working scene of just like playing with a bunch of bands for the money, you know, for mm -hmm. the paycheck. Yeah. Like they're assholes and yeah. they could be real assholes and they yeah. can really like, yeah, I mean, think about it. They're, a lot of them tend to be older than me, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, they don't have a stable band or a band that they're a leader of necessarily, mm -hmm. and a band that's managed by a, a company that's, you know, makes it very so easy for you. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, who the fuck are you? You know yeah. what I mean? And you're a girl, like, you know, having a difference type of yeah. thing. So there's definitely a lot of like obstacles for me with that, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> no, I feel it's like. It's not like, uh, you know. Yes, you're not going to stand down. No, you're still going to exactly. do what you have to do. And to be honest with you, like, a lot of people, those people that I work with that end up, like, starting off like that, like, at the end, it's always like, oh, okay, you're cool. Like, it always ends up, like, working out, sort of, you know? Yeah, but at the beginning, they they, they stand offish because you're a woman and you're in charge. Or in general, like, I've had people come up to me and just be like, oh, who's your boss? Like, who's in charge here? <laughs> 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 and I'm just like... Uh, uh, Who's well, your boss? How can I help you? Uh, you know? I'm the boss, motherfucker. What's good? <laughs> I yeah. love doing that shit. Like, yeah, I'm the boss, motherfucker. Yeah. And scaring the fuck out of him. Like, oh shit. You know, not to shout out Best Buy again, but <laughs> shout out again, Best Buy. <laughs> it was worse when I worked at Best Buy than the music part. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I literally had a guy that just told me, I'm like, oh, do you need any help, sir? He straight up was just like. Um, yeah, can you find me a man that can help me? And I started laughing because I thought it was funny. And he was like, like, I'm not joking. And I was just like, oh, my God. Hashtags is sexism still alive. Yeah. Sexism is still alive. Oh, my God. Very alive. That's crazy, dude. So, like, you, you still have to deal with that in the music industry, I'm sure. For in sure, every industry, yeah. you have to deal with it, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's not something that we've gotten over. It's not, we're not even remotely close to get over it. Um, hopefully, That's sometime in the... And the next, you know, in the next hundred years, we get over that and uh, and we start giving equality of opportunity, as I like to say. You know, I think everybody should has the they they should have the the, uh, the opportunity to go and do something. You know, what I'm saying regardless sure. of wherever you standing or whatever your perspective might be. You know, people just need to like chill with like automatically assuming things. You know, like it's like you're quick to do that, and like obviously, you know, I'm not saying like I don't do it. But it's just really like dumb. It's yeah. like chill. Like give everything a chance and then see what you know. You're not gonna be lost. Like nothing's gonna happen. It's just you're giving something, uh, someone a chance. You know. Yeah. You 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 mentioned something earlier. <clears throat> you said that your band is based here out of Miami. You know, Miami being such a uh, a Latin and Caribbean country um, city. <laughs> I you call can it say I country, think, yeah, bro. It, it, it would like be like North I've Cuba. Said it, yeah, I said it plenty of times that Miami is like the best country, the best city in all of Latin America. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're the best city of it's all of... It's probably the cleanest, We would be like 
the New York City of, of Latin America. Sure. We are basically sure. the New York City yeah. of Latin America, except that we're like in the United States, you know? Like No, you're right. We're you're the, right. We are the, the epitome of what the best Latin American right. city would be. So being that there's a lot of that influence, sexuality plays a, a huge part, you know, in our fucking, sure. in our city and sex sells the city itself. For sure. Being a band leader, do you feel that you have, and being a female band leader, do you feel that you have to oversell sexuality when you're doing certain sets, when you're doing certain, certain numbers, or is it like more like, uh, uh you don't have to think about that? Or is it something that's already ingrained in you because you're Latin too, you know? I think it's that for me. Yeah. Like, for example, we play a blue martini Latin nights, you know? Okay. And like, you can go and perform there, like, you know, and just be like, you know. Yeah, in a box. Like, like, everybody there, that's just in Kendall. Everybody there is old school Latin person that is there to watch you move and make them move. And, like, here's, you know, some old school, like, Latin songs. What, what nights do you play at Blue Martini? Um, we Our schedule kind of, like, rotates oh, okay. every week. But this week, we are there Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Friday, we are at Margaritaville in, in Hollywood. Oh, nice. Yeah, that one's fun. Yeah, that one's outdoor. Yeah, I've seen that stage. So it's kind of ingrained in me. But for example, uh, my like one of the singers, Aisha, like the 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 girl singer in the front. She's not from here, mm-hmm. um, but she has rhythm, obviously, and all that. And I actually push her to be a little bit more like that, which you know, yeah, you feel a little guilty about it in, in some ways. Um, but why? I mean, it's part of the. You shouldn't have to feel guilty about. I mean, I'm not telling her to go and like get naked, you know, and like <laughs> yeah, take off but... your clothes, do it now, you know. Yeah. She's not. It's not a, a stripper um, job, but <laughs> it's definitely you know you have to have like. Honestly, what I lack of better term is like swag. You know yeah. what I mean? Sex swag though. Yeah, a little bit of that. But she like naturally has it though. She she has like that like she's voluptuous. She has a nice curves and things yeah, like that. Yeah, she's yeah exactly. And also she she could dance. You know what I mean? So. But it does play a huge part. It plays, of course, especially here in Miami. Look at everybody in Miami. Everybody yeah. competes on how they look, their bodies. Like you could get plastic surgery anywhere. Yeah. Like anywhere. A CVS, you could go. <laughs> get, get plastic Botox. surgery. Fifteen dollars a week For or some real. shit. I see those ads all over the fucking place where I'm driving, and it's like fifteen dollars a week, but a butt lift. Oh my and god, they finance it for you. It's like, yo, what the fuck? They're re- it's ready. And then that's why I, it makes sense. Like, it, there's a lot of people at Walmart with plastic surgery because I've been noticing them. Like, yo, these these ladies out here at Walmart uh, working yeah. at Walmart have mad plastic Everybody, surgery because like, it's cheapest. But don't. You go out, you don't see the girls and just, like. Can are you good at telling whether somebody has like fake boobs or a fake ass or a fake ass? I could spot pretty yeah? good. Okay. Fake boobs, I really have to look at the boobs to know because you know, just not really a fake ass. You could tell right away. Yeah, but the fake boobs... ass because the things that fake ass is like proportionate. Like you see, not all of them, mm, but the vast majority of them that are done in the fifteen dollars a week. Uh, those, zone, those are <laughs> those are okay. Those are you can spot those from three miles away. <laughs> Like, oh, she's paying $15 a week for that ass. <laughs> you can tell that oh shit my right away. God. It's like, yo, how you got chicken legs and the biggest ass in the world? Like, what? That shit makes no sense. It makes no sense. Absolute no fucking sense. But, yeah, yeah I feel like, I, I don't know, the shininess on the boobs, I feel like, are always like the... The shininess on yeah, the boobs that, is a giveaway? Yeah. Why? You think that they buff the boobs like a new car? What well, is the your shininess? skin is like stretching because you got to fit stuff in there. Like there was some stuff in there that you put it in there. So it's going to stretch. And that's where the shininess is coming I from. I think so. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but if I had to take a guess. I, I should interview so. a doctor and ask him where the, the shininess on the boobs come from. I'm pretty sure it's going to be from that. That's I mean, crazy. you know what? Tell me afterwards. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll I'm interview to one it. and I'll, <laughs> to find and I'll out. let you know where's the sh- Where's the shininess come from? And there's plenty of them that'll come on the shoulders. Or I don't shit know, maybe, ton of, uh, maybe they all put, surgeries. you know, because you could get stretch marks. Yeah. If like stretches, so maybe they all just always put like coconut oil so that it stays like, because it's supposed to be good for your skin. Look at that. So it could go work against the stretch. So maybe marks. they're all just all on to that. I don't know. That's the fucking craziness, yo. But that's 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 what Miami in a nutshell. Though. There's a lot of sex and there's a lot of sexuality and sex sells. You know, sex sells, especially in music. I'm talking to a lot of the musicians and a lot of their lyrics and shit like that always are like towards the sex side. You know what I'm saying? Or like, or are at least trying to 
get in touch with a woman's, um, you know, emotional state. You know, like thinking a lot of songs now are generated for women. I, you guys don't do any original songs, but what kind of when you are playing the music, are you have a, a, a an audience in mind? Or are you just saying, oh, like, I'm having a good time? Are you trying to make the women move or are you trying to make the men move? You I know? get you. Um, well, for us, it's kind of like a little bit easy because we've been playing all these clubs. So we already know the crowd there. You know, okay. we know who goes there. We know what they're expecting to hear kind of. So it makes it a little bit easy. Definitely, if you get the women dancing, they'll drag the men in, you know, and, and start dancing too. And also, women like dance with each other while men don't. So if one girl is dancing on the crowd, then maybe the other girls dancing, they'll start dancing like, kind of like uh, creates like a, a wave. Um, so yeah, for us a little bit easy. But on weddings, it is a little bit hard because on weddings, you don't know what you're gonna get. Sometimes you get like a lot of like, super like north american uh square yeah like they're waiting for country and you're like my bad like <laughs> I, I, don't you. I don't got you i don't got you there's no you square next dancing time. today <laughs> no we we throw it definitely some some country but it's not our forte you know yeah. we're not like and then there's other weddings that are like oh we mainly want latin music you mm -hmm. know um, and then other weddings that don't tell you anything at all. Mm -hmm. So that's when we're like, oh shit, okay, let's figure this shit out as we go, kind of. Um, like you already kind of have a general set list, mm -hmm. but then you have to like on the go, like start catering for who you see, you know. Now, what do you guys like playing more, Spanish or English tunes? Um, I can't speak for the band as a whole. I would say, well, actually, you know what? I would say definitely um, hip hop. I would say it's like something fun for us. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know, it's always like a hype, you know, uh, vibe, sort of. You guys playing hip-hop, like somebody rapping it? Yeah, yeah, we do a lot of rapping, actually, because our, one of our, our MC, he's, like, pretty good rapper. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we like a lot of, like, Biggie or, like, um, Lauryn Hill, like, that kind of stuff we love, love. And the crowd tends to love it, too. Um, I actually been lately into, like, Latin music. By the way, you were talking earlier about how, like, we, like, sexualize everything. Like, mm -hmm. listen to reggaeton. Like, oh, yeah. Reggaeton is basically just... Uh, it's porn. Yeah, it's like of. porn. Spoken. Spanish. <laughs> it is like a like spoken a porn. I don't even know. I like oh, song that. out porn. I don't know. It's a song out porn. Reggaeton is a song out porn. There's a song. I, God, I forgot who exactly. I mean, this is girl that sings it. Very famous. That I'm not, goes, I'm not, I don't know about reggaeton that no? much. No. Basically, the lyrics is it, uh, and like, in mi cama suena. And then they have just a sound effect of a bread going, uh, a bed going, like hitting like the, the yeah. springs in the yeah. back. Yeah. And that's the whole song. That's, that's like the, the hook of the song. I mean, that's, that's, you see what I'm saying? That's part of, that's the Latin machista cu culture blending with the sexual culture. Right, exactly. You know, because that's what lands are, you know? I mean, unfortunately, Latin people don't like to admit it, yo. We come from a fucking place where it's super machista, yo. It's machista as fuck. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so there's machista. no fucking equality in, in Latin America at no, all bro. between sexes. Yeah. It's like no, machista no, no. as fuck. And but people are used to it, so people are used it, like, to don't it. They don't realize. You know? They don't realize it, right? So then that influences everything else that you're gonna do, especially creatively. So anything that's coming out of the Latin sphere is always gonna be hypersexualized. You know what I'm saying? Because 100%. it's coming basically out of a out of a mind out of a man's mind. Ultimately, right. like okay. like I'm Colombian, right? They're controlling the narrative. So they control the narrative, so it's hypersexualized. Exactly. Always a woman, you know, in a corset, and then it's always like ass and titties and shit like that. I'm sure if women were in charge, it wouldn't be like ass and titties all the time in Probably your face. Not. You Probably know what I'm saying? Not, actually. There, there would be like a mixture of other <laughs> things in there between ass and the titties. Well, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't know. I actually feel like. Um, you think that it would be worse? No, no way. I, I mean, that's know. the Latin culture, yeah, though. Yeah, it is the Latin culture. It, I think that is the it's it's let and like you know how we said before, the, a lot of men control the narrative. But I, I don't know. I feel like uh, you know women maybe are too comfortable already with that as well and are too used to that that that's also like the norm kind of. So even if men weren't there, they'd be keep they'd keep it alive themselves. You say. Yeah, I feel like it would. Yeah, because. I don't know, actually. I have to think about that one. I mean, here in Miami, we're a step outside of Latin America. We have like a foot in Latin America mm -hmm. and then a foot in the United yeah. States. Actually, like a couple inches in the United States. Because yeah. we, like, from Miami down south is a whole nother place. You go to West Palm Beach and all that shit, that's a whole nother area, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Literally, it's like that divided, like that, that segregated. Being that we're here, 
we kind of like temp it down a little bit mm-hmm. because over here you can't be as shot out as it no, is yeah, in, yeah, you know, yeah. in DR. In DR, the guys in the street will be like, hey, mommy, like straight up like, yo, let's go fuck. You know what I'm saying? In well, Colombia, yeah. same shit. It's like over here, you do that, it's like sexual harassment sure, and all yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, so like no. you have to tap it down. But still, since we but have all of that. everywhere. What, what do you mean? You could go to like places in Wynwood, like El Patio or something oh, like that. Where well, that's what I'm saying. That's like free for all there. <laughs> because it's been... It's free been, for all. It's infiltrated now. Th- that's but. like a Me Too den right there. <laughs> Oh, me hashtag me too. I'm not even. I'm not even joking. <laughs> hashtag that, me too then. Uh, hashtag me too then. That's what that place is. <laughs> I mean, cool vibe, you know. But cool vibe. The sexual harassment vibe. It's it's, it's rough. It's rough. <laughs> Jeez. Well, that's a, okay, places like El Patio, you know, El Patio is like a synonymous place in Miami, dog. It's like, it is. that is basically kind of like, oh, w- what is popping in the Latin world? That is you it. For, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, where for it's sure. at in South Florida. So what does that speak to of the South Florida culture? That everything is super hyper-sexualized. You and, you doing music, you have to, instead of just paying attention of how awesome your music is, you have to also present this hyper-sexualized, oh, yeah. like, portrayal because people are expecting it you're a miami band you could you imagine a miami band looking like a north dakota no, band? no 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 they'll tell you to get the fuck out <laughs> exactly be like what is this this like, is in miami like no. they want you to be like up there like you know like jennifer lopez Represent or some them. Shit. yeah for sure so it's like how- and we tame it down there's bands that do not tame it down that they, they like, like play on it they do it yeah like I've- pussycat dolls type <laughs> shit yeah well yes exactly <laughs> Exactly. And like, good for them, you know, that they don't mind doing it and they do it all the time. But it's just, uh, I don't know. Every band is different. You know, every member is different. Everybody has like their reservations, you know, like I, I, you know, listening now and comparing back, like I could totally, I would answer your question about me sexualizing myself in the band as like, yeah, I definitely don't do it Mm -hmm. like as much as As other people do. Yeah. Like I've done it more than I've done it with any other band that I've been to with rather. Um, but yeah, I would say, yeah. That you keep it, you keep it uh, at a five yeah, four. Yeah, I keep you know? it PG, you know. Yeah, PG like, when other people are going rated M. Exactly. No, XXX, <laughs> for sure. Triple X. For real. That's ham. So, who who have you had a awesome experience playing with? Have you had any awesome uh, guests that you've played with? Yeah, actually, uh, recently a couple months ago, we played with Mark Anthony, which nice. was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, that was an experience because uh, he forgot the lyrics of his own song. Get out of here. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Was he fucking wasted? Or he, he, I think, yeah, he definitely was on to something. To forget his, yeah. his own lyrics. Well, I, he claimed, like, they even gave him a, a cell phone with the lyrics. Like, yo, catch up, you know? Uh, <laughs> But I don't know. Oh, I guess man, I he's, Mark, was, he, he's Mark Anthony. He was just like, yeah, I don't. He I don't like, need to remember my own lyrics. Exactly. Homie. I was I'm like, fucking right, Mark you're Anthony. Right. You know? You're right. <laughs> you're Mark <laughs> Anthony. You're just you on know? stage. You get that's it. For real. Then yeah. we played another one. We played uh, Vivir Mi Vida with him. That one, he was like, that one was not the one that he asked us. He was like, do you guys know that one? We're yeah. Like, yeah, dude, we know that one. Yeah. Do you know that one? <laughs> <laughs> How many songs did you get to play with him? Um, we played two, mm-hmm. but he came on stage for a couple other ones that we did with like, um, his group of friends. Cause we played a wedding, uh, that was, I guess, friends of his mm-hmm. and, um, and they all came on stage and started singing. Like, I think it was like, sorry by Justin Bieber or something like that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you guys were playing another, so you guys were doing a cover, cover with Mark Anthony. With Mark Anthony. You that's see? dope. You that's see? fucking crazy. You guys covering other that's people's what, music. That's how far covers get you. That's you get to play with Mark go. Anthony. <laughs> For real. You do a fucking Justin Bieber cover with Mark Anthony. For real. No, Damn. the cover, the cover uh, band industry is interesting. Uh, other bands have played with like plenty of other artists. There was a band that um, uh, had to play with Sting, actually. Oh, uh, shit. In Chicago, yeah. Another band, um, freaking Trump, walked into their... To the wedding that they were playing, you and know? they played with Trump. They didn't play with him, but they he he sang he or went something. In there. Yeah, he, went he just in went in there. He didn't and like sing. did a speech to the bride or whatever. He's and gonna then, be huge. Yeah, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah. Do you guys do any uh, concerts? Like any tours? Um, we don't do tours, but we're pretty much booked every month, like 
from beginning to month to end. Fuck. Um, we travel. Um, like last month we were in DC. Okay. The month we, before we went, we played with Mark Anthony actually in the DR. Oh, okay. So we went down there. Um, we play in Naples at the Blue Martini over there, at the Blue Martini in Tampa. Well, I think they closed the one in Tampa. We haven't played there in a while. Yeah. We play everywhere in Florida. We yeah. play down up from and down the Keys, Florida. Up in. That's cool, wherever. man. And if people, Immokalee, if you've ever been there. I've been to Immokalee. Yeah? Yeah, it's in the yeah, middle of fucking Immokalee. nowhere. Yeah, I've been to Immokalee. Don't go to Immokalee. <laughs> I've been out there. It's fucking rough in Immokalee. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of gators and Ooh, shit. There's yeah. just, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot more stuff than gators. No, there's, there. yeah, no, people don't know, like, Central Florida, you know? Central Florida is, is very... Odd. Yeah, it is odd. That's yeah. exactly, that's the perfect word, is odd. It's like a mixture of, like, super southern confederates with a lot of, like... Mexicans yes. and Indians. Mexicans that are like real Mexicans. It's and like, like they're the ones like working the the fields that yeah. pick up like the freaking oranges, the yeah. tomatoes, where the fuck they. Yeah. Have. For the the other people, the uh, white people that live there. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's a crazy little. It's a and you don't know it's right there in your backyard. You think you think that this shit doesn't happen around you and shit like that. Like no. yeah, this shit happens right right next to you, like right down the street, yo. It's like a 45 minute to an hour drive and you go back into like fucking another era of the United States. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. You go into the fucking past. And I, I don't want to, you know, get political, but yeah. I, I want to tell you a little anecdote. I, I was like, you know, involved with the Bernie Sanders um, uh, campaign mm -hmm. uh, as far as just like helping volunteering and stuff like that. And when he came down here, he did a speech and he talked about Immokalee. Yeah. And he said how he was involved in a case of Immokalee where they literally had slaves, like yeah. Mexican slaves being held by um, these people that had them there for a while against their will. Um, and it was a whole case. Yeah, that so, doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise no, yeah. me because they take advantage of these people because the vast majority of them are illegals. So they it's, can, yeah. They, yeah, so it's just like you're an illegal doc, you're an illegal immigrant. Right. What are you going to do? You're not going to call the police on me because they're going to deport you. Exactly. So like, I'll just give you your living and your whatever food to survive and you do all the work, but... That's that happens, yo. And people are oh, like, yeah. they're not aware of that, you know? No, when, I mean, like, it's just secluded. Like, who the fuck wants to go to Immokalee, you know? Like, nobody, people Especially when Kim Kardashian's it. ass is like two seconds away from you, exactly. you know what I'm saying? On Instagram, on IG. Exactly. <laughs> what the fuck are you going to do in Immokalee? What are you doing in Immokalee? There's no signal in Immokalee. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anybody wanted to get in contact with you to try to get you to play for them at their wedding or any event that they might have, where could they get in contact with you? Um, you call Best Buy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Best Buy. <laughs> So they could go to Tropics Entertainment or they could just reach uh, me. All right. What's Tropics? Uh, TropicsEntertainment.com? Yeah. Tropics Entertainment. Um, oh, yeah. They could go to our site or Instagram, Entourage Band. Entourage Band yeah. is all one word. Just one word. Or at March Tobin on okay. Instagram. Holler. And yeah. And Are we'll you guys down to do out. like collabs with people and shit? Yeah, for sure. We... We played, like I said, we played with Mark Anthony. So yeah, for we're sure. We're down to play with whoever. Yeah, <laughs> do another cover. This is good. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming on. Thank you. Talking to us, shooting this is the awesome. shit. Yeah, so I mean fun. it was it was a, it's a it's a cool experience having you on, talking about the cover band world here in South Florida. For sure. What I you hope doing? I'm boring. No, you're not boring. You're super cool. I like what you're doing. I like um, that you're a female and that you're actually fucking doing it. You know, it's true because that's... <laughs> Thanks for liking my gender. Shout out to that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shout out to females doing shit in Miami, you know, because... For sure, no, I appreciate they're, that. They're not all ass and titties out yeah. here, you know what I'm saying? We it's, need that. We need the support. Yeah, there's some... Uh, of non-plastic uh, surgeons, like real support. <laughs> yeah, like real, real deal support. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and to you guys, I hope you guys like this episode. If you if you do, please share it, subscribe, and uh, do all that good shit. Right? Hasta la próxima. I'm Darren Figueroa with the Que Hola Podcast for Fresh or Fresh Late. So you already heard it right there. I want to thank Marjorie for coming on to the show and talking to us, chopping it up with us, letting us know all these little tidbits and information about her, her career choices and things like that. You already know where to reach out to her if you were interested in looking for uh, some collabs. Her IG, March Thobin, <laughs> super funny, super awesome. Also her website, entourageband.com. Also tropicsentertainment.com. Various ways for you to get in contact with her. And also on Ruxley, R-U-X-L-Y.com. I appreciate your time, Marjorie. I appreciate you guys' time for listening to the Que Podcast. And uh, yeah, subscribe, share it with your friends, do all that cool stuff. 
Until the next time, you can reach out to me if you want. WhatsApp, W-A-S-S-A, at freshrefresh.com. Thank you so much once again. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Peace.